Let's take a more in-depth look at some of the elements of the interface. We're going to start with the toolbar over here on the left. So let's just go ahead and close the brush selector to get that out of the way. And I'll just move my little custom palette down here. Starting at the top of the toolbar, we have the brush tool. Now we've already played with the brush tool a little bit, but let's take a look at what else it can do. When you have a brush or a tool selected, the options up here in the properties bar will change. So you'll notice that when I click on the dropper, I get different options. When I click on the paint bucket, I get different options. So all of the functions of the tool in the toolbar are located up here in the top in the properties bar. So with the brush tool selected, I can choose a brush to paint with. I can reset my brush if I've made any changes to it. We'll come back to that after we've made some changes. I can draw a freehand, which is what I'm doing now. I'm able to draw a freehand line any way I want. But I can also switch to straight line strokes. And when I do that, I'll click to make a start point, and I can click again to make an end point. And I can continue making points if I want a segmented line. Now, some brushes work better than others for creating segmented lines. This one's creating some gaps in between the lines, so it's not ideal. There's actually a better way to draw a line like this using the vector tools, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. If you want to break the line segment, you just hit V on your keyboard, and then you can tap, create a start point, create an end point, hit V again on your keyboard, make another start and end point, hit V again, and that makes it really easy to draw as if you're using a ruler, if you want to draw something angular or man-made. Right next to V on your keyboard is B, and if you hit B, it switches it back to freeform drawing. So I can freeform draw, I can hit V, I can draw a straight line, hit B again, freeform draw, hit V to draw a straight line, back to B, and I can even hit N on my keyboard and I can switch to my eraser. So B, V, and N are all right next to each other, and that's for a reason that makes it really quick and easy to draw. So I'm going to go back to the brush tool with B. And we're seeing these options up here because we have the scratchboard tool selected. But if I have a different type of brush selected, such as an airbrush, these options might change. If I choose something like a cloner, then the options change again. If I choose dynamic speckles, then I get different options. And what's being shown are the most relevant properties for each brush. That doesn't mean that that's everything that you can change about a brush, but it's just the most commonly accessed properties. I'm gonna go back to my scratchboard tool. The next two options are for aligning your stroke to a path and perspective guided strokes, but we'll come back to those later in this course. Next to that we have size, and as we looked at earlier, we could change our brush size this way by entering a numeric value or using the slider. But we can also click here on the size icon, and that gives us a flyout menu that gives us control over some size properties. So we can control the size, we can control the minimum size of the brush, and some other settings that we'll look at a little bit later. Depending on the type of brush you have selected, these options in these flyout menus may change as well. You can also pop out panels here if you click on size panel. That pops out size, which is the same menu here as its own panel if you wanted it to remain on screen to access it all the time. You can always close it, and if you want to get back to it, you can do that here. I'm not going to dive too deep into brush properties right now. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. But for now, just know that those are here. Next to that, we have opacity, and we already know how to change opacity. But again, opacity has its own flyout where we can change some different properties and we can pop out the opacity panel. Next to that, we have a swatch that is showing the color that we have selected. If we click on that, then we can choose from our color sets panels here. So we can have little wells of paint if you want little swatches like this. Let's say you want this manganese blue, you can paint with that. And you could switch to a cadmium lemon and you could paint with that. Personally, I prefer to pick my colors manually, but sometimes it's nice to paint with those little paint swatches. 